I'm Sonia Thompson and this is Delight Me. Can you think of a business that made you just want to keep coming back for more good stuff with every interaction? That's been my experience thus far with the blog Primility. Through a series of personal touches, founder Jared Morris has delighted me every step of the way. First it was with a personal email to welcome me to his site. Then it was a free bracelet for signing up on his website. And the final thing that got me hooked for good was a handwritten note that came with my bracelet. Jared sure knows how to woo his readers, so I thought it'd be great to spend some time with him to find out his secrets to getting his readers to love him. Tell us about Promility. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on here, and thank you for your support of Primility, Sonia. I really appreciate it. Um, yes, yes, that's so awesome. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so Primility is basically a way to achieve anything that you love and that you're capable of, um, which is kind of a tagline and a way of explaining it that I just recently came up with. Um, the word Primility basically takes pride and humility and joins them together. And that's awesome. It's yeah. It was kind of it was one of those things that just kind of came to me in 2005. I don't even remember like really what I was doing, you know, at the time when it happened. But I've kind of I've held on to it ever since then, and it's just always really spoken to me as this way that anything that you want to do, you know, if you make sure that you have your pride and your humility in balance. To me, it's just always been this very simple formula for doing anything. Because if you have too much pride, now you're not going to do enough learning. You're not going to involve other people. You're not going to enjoy the team concept that a lot of times it takes to achieve something. Right. But if you're too humble, then you may never get off the couch and do anything. You may not feel worthy. You may not even feel like it's worth going out there and failing to learn. And so it always seems like you know if there's a place that you want to go, maybe you're a little bit too far this way or a little bit too far this way on that kind of pride-humility spectrum. Right. So if you can get them in balance, get them in harmony, um, to me, you can achieve anything. That's awesome. And so you've talked about some examples of people who have – Definitely put primility and practice of late. Like LeBron James was an example. The guy, um, your home inspector recently. Have you come across lots of examples once you actually defined what that is, that balance, that perfect balance that lets people achieve anything? Well, you know, the LeBron James example was interesting because as soon as I posted that, they lost three straight games. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I don't know how. But, you know, the, the great thing about that example is, you know, I think – you know, when you start getting into self-improvement, self-actualization type stuff, things can get kind of nebulous, kind of frou-frou. It's like, you can do anything. Well, no, we can't do anything. You know, like, I can't be an NBA player. You know, no matter how much I try, I wouldn't be an NBA player. And so that example with LeBron James is, here's a guy who, from the time he was 16, 17 years old, was basically thought to be capable of being the greatest NBA player of all time. Right. And the fact that he's come close to it, that he's even in that conversation, is remarkable when you consider how far he had to go, right? So he was capable of doing it, and because he's so prideful in his work, but because he's humble enough to understand the importance of team and to work hard, he's gotten there. So that's just an example of, you may not be capable of becoming the basketball player LeBron James is, but what is it that you are capable of re reaching those great heights? You know, and so when you can examine yourself, understand that, figure out where that intersection is between capability and ability, then if you, you know, if you have this balance of the pride and humility on a daily basis, to me, you can get there one step at a time. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a wonderful lesson that we all need to learn. And once you start to put it into practice on a regular basis, you see just how far it can take you. You want to just keep going. So it's great. And I, I mean, are, are you finding that, you know, as you've kind of been introduced to the concept, are you finding that you can apply it to your daily life? Absolutely. Um, and a great example of that is recently in my schedule. Um, I've never been a runner. I've always hated, hated doing it, but mm -hmm. there wasn't ever any reason that I couldn't do it. So I started working through a program, the Couch to 5K program, and, you know, each time I would do it, you know, whether I wanted to or not, I'd take my butt out there to go running. And I found that I was able to do more and more and more, and knowing that I'm not going to get to a place where I can run a 5K in 25 minutes um, just by walking out there and doing it, it's going to take me consistently working at it getting out there for the run, working on my technique so that I can get faster. And every time I go for the run, I do actually see that I'm able to improve my standing. And it, it, you get prideful because you do want to just continue to do better, but you know that it takes work for you to be able to do it. So it's yeah. been good. That's awesome. 
See, hearing those stories is what gets me so excited. That's that's <laughs> wonderful. Thank you for it's sharing. Doing good that. stuff. Now, Thank one you. of the things that I wanted to make sure that we talked about uh, specifically was about how you treat your customers. So you've got this wonderful concept that you have thought up and you've put a lot of framework behind it, but now it's about introducing it so that you can get to more of those stories from other people. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that you've done as you've been working to spread the word is you've got the bracelets that you've been sending out mm -hmm. um, and then with the personal touches that you've been adding it's just been getting customers so delighted, myself included, so excited about what you're doing, how you make us feel as we're going through this process that we've been very anxious to share. Um, so what was the thought behind the bracelets and why is it that you want to get so many out to so many people. Well, you know, the, the thing with the wristbands, and this was kind of the original wristband right here in gray, which was, I think it was, it was about 2010. Um, when I was just, I'd reached a point in my life where I wanted to make some changes, wanted to do some things differently. And, you know, the, the thought, this whole primality thought kind of rekindled in my mind. And I thought, okay, I need a reminder. Because when I was back in high school, I used to wear rubber bands and different things that if I wanted to remember something, I would use it as a symbol. Okay. So I thought, well, you know, let me just get what's like, you know, a live strong wristband or whatever. Let me just get one of those and see if it works. And I found it to be really helpful as a reminder. And so when I started, you know, to get back excited about this idea of humility and really trying to organize a community around it, really get the idea out there, I thought, well, what better way to give people an opportunity to really latch onto it than share this idea of the wristbands? And if they want to take advantage of it, awesome. Um, and, and I really. I don't know, I guess I didn't put that much thought or plan into it, really, like in terms of pleasing customers or anything, because I don't really think of, of the readers as customers. It's just right. kind of friends sharing in this idea. And, I, you know, I thought, I, I thought okay, if someone's going to give me an email, an email address and, and sign up for, for a subscription, I want to have something for them. Well, I don't have an ebook yet. You know, that stuff is coming. What can I do? Well... I can get a whole bunch of these wristbands and send them out if anybody wants them. And I was real nervous that no one was going to want them. So I just <laughs> did this really small production run at first. Um, and that was really exciting when I ran out of that and had to do another one and get a whole bunch more in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and, and so, and, and the whole, you know, thing with, you know, writing cards after that with them, they have to be delivered somehow. And right. so, you know, I'm not just going to drop it in an envelope. It, it's, you know, people are giving me something of value which is an email address and they're giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts with them and so when someone gives you something of value to me you thank them and I was trained from an early age the importance of thank you notes and so it really it just happened naturally right. and I started having so much fun with it and then seeing reactions of people like you who talked about how pleasing it was and it all just kinda came together you know I didn't necessarily plan it it really happened organically um, and it's probably taken more time and, and a lot of things that I wasn't necessarily planning on but I've had so much fun with it, and the reaction has been so great that cool. you know I can't help but continue because it's just <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> That's cool. So you really just took the principles of what you've learned growing up of how to effectively build a relationship with someone, how to increase that level of intimacy through with that, and you carried it over to your business to make it something that really helps you to connect with your customers or your readers. Yeah, I mean, I'd love to say that I was smart enough to have thought it up beforehand and had this grand plan, but it was really just one of those things that I did naturally. You see the reaction, and then the light bulb goes off, and it's like, wow, what what a great way to really build a real relationship with somebody, right. you know, to right. to actually add a personal touch to it. Um, and it's it's been really nice. A lot of the people who have signed up are people I was able to meet at Authority Intensive, or that I've known, you know, people at Copy Blogger, you know, or people that I've actually known and met. But there are also some other people that I've never met. And so it's a great way to add a personal touch. There's no way to actually shake their hand or thank them or right. give them a hug or anything, and no real way to call them because I don't have their, you know, their phone number or anything. So it's really the only way to add a personal touch. You know, at a point in time, I was here writing on this card in this pen, you know, just like our ancestors did, and now you have this thing. So there's a yeah. personal connection there. Um, and so, you know, I do think it's a it's a great way to start building that kind of customer reader relationship um, I just I kinda wish I was smart enough to have thought it up before but <laughs> it's just one of those things again you just kinda start doing put it out there you see yeah. how things work and follow what works and what feels right that's wonderful it's a it's it's been great and I can see the excitement of other people as they've been getting their bracelets and sending pictures so you've been doing it and you found that it's a little time-consuming but you've been getting so much value out of it what are your thoughts on 
10,000 people later, are you still going to be writing the cards? How do you think you might work on scaling that uh, so that it doesn't get too overwhelming so you're not just writing cards all day? Yeah, I mean, yes, that, that's my goal now, is to do it certainly for the first 10,000 and have all of those people get a wristband and a personal card for me. Uh, which, again, when I initially said 10,000, you know, you kind of hear you need, you know, kind of 10,000 people to really have, have an audience or do something serious online. Mm -hmm. And that's where that number came from. There wasn't really much more than that. And I just thought, it'd be great, you know, if this thing went far enough and there were 10,000 people with these wristbands, that means 10,000 people might be impacted by this like I have. Let's right. just do it and throw it out there. And so, yeah, now I, I, I want to carry that through with everybody as far as scaling it. Uh, I don't know that there's really a way to scale something like that other than for me to just get better at managing my priorities throughout the day so that <laughs> I have the time and the gaps in the day to, to sit down and, and write the cards out. Um, and when you find that you love something and you enjoy something, it naturally becomes a priority and you just make time for it. Right. And, that's, and that's what's happened. So, you know, I, I hope to have that big problem where it feels overwhelming and there's too many of them because that means a lot of people are buying into the idea and there's a community building and that is the ultimate goal. Yeah, that's definitely a good problem to have. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, have there been any other uh, unexpected surprises that you've gained from the connection and the engagement with your readers? Just, I mean, just the level of connection that it's brought. I, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't expecting that. Um, you know, I mean, I wanted to have it, but I wasn't sure how people would respond. I think people, when they sign up for an email address, they expect an auto response. And so people, you know, seem kind of surprised, but fortunately, pleasantly so, to get a personal email. And right. I think people, again, were, you know, were kind of surprised to get the handwritten note. And so what's been nice is getting that back in kind. You know, so people responding in Sunday's email newsletter when I ask questions or commenting or, you know, sending me back the pictures, actually, of the wristband. I was worried people would get them and, you know, no one's going to send back the pictures. <laughs> but everybody is. And so I think just that buy-in and the excitement level from other people has... I, I wasn't expecting that, and it's just been, it. you know, I'm really proud to see it because it means that something that's being said, something that's developing is important to people, and that's, you know, that's just wonderful. Priceless. That's wonderful to hear. Mm -hmm. So this is a project that's near and dear to your heart that you've been working on, but your day job is over at Copyblogger, where you're yes. the director of content. Um, mm -hmm. Have you picked up a lot of lessons uh, that from your work at Copyblogger in terms of managing customer relationships and readers that you've been able to apply to your work at Primality? Yeah, I think, I think the main one is just our idea of be useful. You know, so everything that you put out, it needs to have a purpose. It needs to be useful to the audience. And okay. so I think just that idea of being very audience focused, you know, whether it's in an email, whether it's in a post, whether it's in what we do over an authority, whether it's what we're doing with Rainmaker, it's all very audience focused. It's very much geared towards, you know, gaining feedback, listening to the feedback and incorporating that feedback. And so, and that's not necessarily something that I understood well enough until I got kind of thrown into it with how Copyblogger operates. But so much of what we do is just based around, I mean, that's the litmus test, right? Is this useful for the audience? No? Then get rid of it. Yes? Okay, then pursue it. You know, and so I think just having that audience-centered focus um, has been the biggest lesson, and it's huge because you can apply it, you know, not just to content marketing, but you can apply it to anything. Absolutely. So have you found that there is any big difference in uh, working for a larger company like Copyblogger who's got a, a pretty decent uh, size support network and being able to make sure that you stay customer centric and customer focused or is it just if you focus on it you'll be able to achieve it no matter what size your company is? I mean, there's always going to be challenges of scale, and so, and obviously, scale is a good thing when you're running a business. You want to have that challenge. Right. Um, and so I think, you know, that's something. I mean, Copyblogger is obviously very, uh, you know, a big, big company now with a lot of readers, and so there is that challenge of trying to still give that personal touch while serving a large audience. And so I think we've incorporated, you know, f you know like like authority, basically giving people another chance to opt in for an extra level of commitment, communication, um, education. And so I think you have to, you know, Brian Clark talks about the circles of belief, right? And so you have to have those set up so that people can continue to go on that journey with you. Um, and then find opportunities to have a personal interaction when you can. Okay. Um, you know, we took that away a little bit when comments went off. 
uh, the blog, but I think we've been able to do it in other ways, on Google Plus and on Twitter and uh, obviously having the Authority Intensive event, which was our first event. So it's one of those things you have to make sure that you're focused on the whole and, and doing your R&D and, and everything else that you need to create products that are useful for people while finding those opportunities to reach out and have the one-on-one -on -one connections when you can. So at Copy Blogger, would you say that usefulness is the key to customer delight? It's the key to keeping their customers coming back again and again and again? I think usefulness, um, and that's part of it. You know, people have to know, like, and trust you. I think that's really at the heart of everything. Uh -huh. um, it, you know, because if, because then they have a connection, and and the trust even goes beyond the connection. You know, because that kind of suggests authority, you know, that they trust not only your intentions, but that they trust that what you're saying is going to lead them in a good direction. They yeah. trust that you've done what you're saying and so that you can speak with, you know, with some level of proven authority as well. So I think you want to be useful, but you also have to make sure that you're useful in a way that people know you, they like you, and trust you because that way they're not just, you know, that way they want to do business with you. You know, you can yeah. be useful and just give out free content all day, but if you want to take it to another level and, and do business with people, it's got to go beyond, I think, just pure usefulness. Oh, that's a good distinction, a way to connect the dots for us so we know how to make sure that we're providing stuff that people want, but in a way that serves both of us moving forward as we, as we go along. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Well, this has been great, Jerry. Thank you again for spending time with us today. Um, are there anything else that you want to share with us in terms of what's up for, for what's up next for Primality and what can we can expect from both um, you and Copy Blogger? Uh, well, with Copy Blogger, we have obviously Rainmaker is going on. If you go to rainmakerplatform.com, check that out. I run Primality on Rainmaker. Actually, one of the reasons I wanted to get back into Primality was I wanted a project to work with Rainmaker on. Okay. And so through that, it got me back thinking about the idea again, you know, and, and kind of got my excitement going with it. So, you know, Rainmaker is really a wonderful platform for people to check out. And with Primility, if you want a wristband, go get on the subscription list. I'll send you a personal email. And I think I've figured out my posting schedule. Tuesdays and Thursdays, new posts on the blog, and then a Sunday newsletter. I think it worked. You know, it worked for Chris Gillibo when he was building his thing to do Tuesday, mm -hmm. Thursday. And I know I want to do the Sunday newsletter, so I think I'll do that. So. That's, uh, that's what you can expect from content and just hopefully, you know, I want to share ideas with people I hope that are inspiring, that, I, that they find insightful and that motivate people to achieve whatever they love and are capable of. That's the idea. Oh, that's wonderful. We look forward to more. One other quick question if I can sneak in there. Of course. You mentioned that you've got your full-time job. You're going to do a Tuesday, Thursday posting schedule plus all your handwritten notes plus a Sunday newsletter. Yes. <laughs> How do you find the time to do it all? I know you mentioned that you find time to do the things that you love, but are, are you just very efficient in how you work to be able to accomplish all that? I'm getting more efficient um, because I have to. And I think what I really like about this is now having this other project is really pushing me to find more efficiencies in my day. And I've actually, I mean, I really, I did, I was starting to get a little worried that, hey, you know, I can't, this obviously can't impact, you know, what I'm doing for my day job, but I also don't want it to impact, you know, time with Heather and time with family and all those things, really try and keep that balance. And it's amazing because what I've found is I've become more productive while I've been writing these cards. Because, you know, what I'll do is when someone emails me their address, I'll address the card and I set it down to the side. And as soon as I get a gap in the day, you know, some kind of transition, right? Like maybe I get done editing the copy blogger post and it's time to go load up buffer or whatever it is. There's a transition. Mm -hmm. Boom, grab a card, write out the card real quick, and then I get right to the next right to the next task. Instead of before, it used to take me a lot longer to transition between things. You know, maybe you go read a few articles, you go down an internet rabbit hole somewhere, you take right. the dog for an extra walk that maybe he doesn't need, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. You go get a snack you don't need. So I found that I get rid of a lot of that stuff and it's just you know, write the card onto the next task, and I've been able to squeeze more into my day doing that. So that's that's really surprising, but it just goes to show, again, it's not time management, it's priority management. And when things become your priority, it's amazing how time frees itself up. Um, but really, it's just making better conscious decisions throughout the day. Well, that's wonderful, and it's good to know, just as we, we can take control of our schedule, but it's all about setting those priorities and making sure that we're very clear about what's important, what it is we want to accomplish, and we'll make the time for it. Very cool. Yes, absolutely. There you have it. Sometimes the key to getting your customers to love you is all about the basics. As Jared said, when someone gives you something of value, you thank them. 
Now as you think about how to apply what's been working so well for Primelody to your own business, here's a question for you. What will you do to thank your customers for giving you something of value? That may be their time, attention, money, or their email address. Think about it and then let me know your answer in the comments. I want to hear all about it. Until next time, keep working on making life better. See you soon.